Well, hey everybody, it's 3 p.m. and welcome to Breaking Bread with Nanny Bubby. I'm Nanny Bubby and welcome to my kitchen. So I put out a bunch of stories this morning that talked about what I'm doing today. And what I'm doing is I am making bone broth, real old fashioned bone broth, not an Instapot. I'm gonna put it on with you this afternoon. I'm gonna simmer it, I'm gonna bring it to a boil and then simmer it for about 48 hours and I'm not turning it off until Monday morning and I will see you Monday afternoon at 3 p.m. and we will put the whole thing together. It's an interesting process. I love going through it, but I have to tell you this is my first time making beef bone broth. So I am the chicken soup, chicken bone broth expert, been making it for years and I've gotten better and better and better as I go because you remember that cooking is a practice just like yoga, just like music, cooking is a practice. You're not gonna walk into the kitchen for the first time in 10 years and be comfortable. But little by little by little, your instincts and your intuition will take over and you will be able to cook without really thinking, but just feeling your way through the kitchen. And that's always my goal for you here today. So let me see who's joining us. Let me just bring over this iPad. Sometimes I can see, sometimes I can't. So let's see if anybody has joined in. Um, let's see, one comment and I cannot really, yep. So, um, nope, feels like I'm the only one here. <laughs> so swipe left, swipe right. Tom is here, so hey Tom, thanks for joining. I love it when he's here. All right, well, people will join us a little bit as we go along, but let me talk to you about the first two things that I have right here in front of me, and then we'll turn around and put it all together in about 10 minutes. And it only takes 10 minutes because it's prepped. And so if you wanna do anything quickly in the kitchen, just prep it all a day or you know, ahead or in the morning, you have to be prepped and you can walk in the door and you can make things just as quickly as I have. So, first thing I have here are these fabulous beef bones that come from Feather Blade, the um, English butchery. It is absolutely my favorite place to visit. The produce department of Whole Foods and Feather Blade Butchery are my favorite places to go in this city. They're just amazing. I got these bones. They're very heavy. I think I have six pounds of bones here. They've been cut so that they'll fit into my, into my pot, which is about as big as a witch's cauldron. You can see it behind me. You're going to get a tight shot of it in just a minute. And um, I have taken these bones and I have slathered them with tomato paste, put them in a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour, and you can see how caramelized they are. Um, I think I can probably, let me see if I can grab, yeah, I can. Let me, let me, hold on here. Let me grab this, because I want to do actually a tight shot for you and literally show you just how, um, I think this is camera three, yeah it is. So take a look at just, do you see all that, those dark bits? Those dark bits are really nothing more than caramelization and believe me when I tell you, that is exactly where all that flavor is. Do you see that? And so that is exactly what we're going to be putting into the pot. Now the other thing I want to show you, which is my favorite thing ever, is, let's see, that take? Nope. That did. Okay. These are the herbs that are right from my garden. I, it's called a bouquet garnet in French, and you can see it has dill fresh from the garden. I cut these about an hour ago. It has parsley, and you know, in beef broth, you want it just to have a little more earthy flavor, and so I have two stalks, if you can see them, of the uh, rosemary right there. How's that? That's fabulous, right? So here we are. I'm gonna turn my back now, um, on you, and I'm going to meet you over here, over by the pots. So if you're ready, let's go. There we are, okay. Is that right? Let's see, I'm not sure that it is. There we are, okay. So here I am, can you see me? I don't think you can. 
So let me put this down and let me adjust this so that you can see me. Here I am. All right, so I'm going to kind of do this back and forth between the two cameras. It's a little more difficult to do, but um, I think you can see the whole thing. I'm going to use the tight shot here every now and then, but the first thing I want to tell you, let's see, this is on the fire. I think I'm going to move this just a little bit closer here and turn on a bigger fire. I'm just these burners are all different sizes. Actually, I'm going to move it down to right over here. How's that? That's it. That's better. Okay, let me turn that on. That burner I use all the time. There we go. Okay, so I am going to change places here, and I'm going to put all of the things that I'm going to be placing into this pot right here in front of you. So the first thing that I have here, and I might have to move this a little bit, is I've already filled this with water. So let me just show you that. There we go. Okay. Moving everything over, and let me just take this over here. Okay. So as you can see here, let me get to camera three. You can see here, we've got a full uh, pot of water. There we go. And I'm going to add probably just a little more water to it. So there you go. And that's what's really, really cool about this entire setup that I have here in the kitchen is I have the ability to be able to do this and add extra water um, when I need it. So what I'm going to do, there we go. Let's get back to camera two, here we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add first the bones. And we'll add extra water if we need to, but what I'm really concerned about is that I don't want it to get too high up. I need to leave room for it to breathe a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab these fabulous bones that I've shown you that are caramelized. And I'm gonna very gently, because we don't wanna plop these in, they're just full of flavor. And there is magic to making this happen. Okay, there we go. Into the pot. Okay, after that, put this back. After that, we are going to add the carrots. As you can see right here, here's, I'm adding six carrots. Let me hold this up so that you can see as I go. So this calls for a lot less water than what I have in this witch's cauldron right here. But um, it's going to cook down a great deal. It's going to be very rich, a little ways along. That was uh, garlic. Let me just show you a tight shot of that. Look at this garlic. I cut the top off so it's exposed. Now I put it in, and that way it adds an entire, um, what do you call that? Not a clove, an entire... Can't think of the word. You're thinking of it. You're saying it to yourself right here. Here comes all the celery, and I've got two onions. That's it. So the water hasn't come up too badly at this point. But now let me show you what I'm going to do with the bouquet garnet. So I have used kitchen twine to tie up the bouquet garnet. Grab it right over here. Okay. And there you go. You see that? So it's all tied up. So that is when this is over on Monday morning. All I have to do is just reach in with some tongs, pull this out, but I'm going to bury it like it's diving in so it gets just buried way down in there, just like that. Show you a tight shot. Whoops, I just turned on another burner. I'll just show you another tight shot of that. There we go. You can see the bouquet garnet right there. There you go. There we go. You can see it just diving right in. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so um, now what we're gonna do is one of these days I'm gonna get an intern in here that can switch all the different shots, right? But in the meanwhile, I'm doing chief bottle washer here. Switching cameras, doing audio and cooking. Okay, I'm turning up the heat. I'm gonna turn it up nice and high, get a rolling boil out of it. Once it goes to a rolling boil, I'm gonna 
Oh my God. Peppercorns all over the floor. I'll get those later. You don't have to watch me sweep them up. Um, I will put it on the back burner on a low simmer, and this is going to go until Monday morning. So I'm going to take a handful of these peppercorns, if you can see, right here. All right. And I, now the question is, why peppercorns instead of pepper? And the answer is, you don't want pepper floating around in the water. And when I strain this, the peppercorns actually come out. So it's just pure broth without, you know, pepper doesn't really dissolve the way that salt does and you still see it in your broth. So I always use peppercorns because when I strain it, I strain the peppercorns out, but the flavor has stayed. And that's a lot of pepper, but we're okay with that. I'm going to add about five small bay leaves. Now, the key to good tasting broth is always salt because if you taste this without salt in it, it tastes like dirty dishwater. Chicken soup is the same. Any soup, any broth, if it is unsalted, it tastes like dirty dishwater. It's the funniest thing. You add a little salt and up comes the flavor. You can taste every vegetable. You can taste every, you know, taste that it, the garlic, everything that is in your soup. So just to start it out, I am going to sprinkle in about two tablespoons of salt, which each one of these is a teaspoon. So that would be five, six teaspo teaspoons equal two tablespoons. It's probably not enough. I'll salt it more later as I taste it. But here is the key to making delicious bone broth and actually making and pulling all of the collagen out of the bones. Now, ladies and men, if you wanna talk about collagen, you wanna talk about your face, you wanna talk about your arms, you wanna talk about really you know, having tightness within your body, collagen is the way to go. And so we get collagen from bone broths, whether it's chicken or beef, there is, as long as that broth has jellied, you will find just how unbelievable the collagen is for your health. And the way to get the collagen out of these bones is apple cider vinegar. So this is one cup, because I've got so much water, you will never taste this, but this breaks down those bones breaks them down, helps them break apart, and helps the collagen just come right out, the marrow just come right out of the bones. So if you're ready, here we go. One cup, just pour it right in of apple cider vinegar. And that's it, that took us all of about what? Well, I talked for five minutes, and um, probably about seven minutes to put this together. Now, again, I did um, roast the bones for you before you got here. Um, I made sure that they were caramelized and brown. They were not burnt, they were caramelized, and anybody that spends time in the kitchen has learned that all the flavor is where the brown is. And there was plenty of brown with that tomato paste, uh, that caramelized over the bones and now right into the pot they go. I'm gonna grab the top to this. You can still hear me. I'm not gonna add any more water. I'm gonna bring this up to a rolling boil and when it comes to a rolling boil, I'm gonna simmer it back on a back burner until Monday and join me Monday afternoon at 3 p.m. and we're gonna finish off this broth. Um, and you know what, I might even strain it and get it into the refrigerator just so you can see, at least some of it anyway, just so you can see it become jellied. And the minute you can freeze it that way, you can freeze it up to six months in a, um, uh, container, plastic quart containers is what I put mine in, and also in a food saver bag. You can probably go a little bit longer, it just depends what your preference is. I do both, a little bit of both. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I do that. I don't know. I just, it, I prefer the quart containers to be honest. So, um, just word to the wise as far as that goes. And I will show you maybe a jellied one, and then I'll show you how I put it all together. So, 
from me to you. Let's come back over here. There we go, actually right here. That's where we want to be. I want to wish you all a really wonderful and beautiful weekend. I want to thank you for joining me. I want to remind you actually that, let's see, um, is the Melissa, Melissa's bug has been on the whole time? Yeah, it has been. Okay. I also want to remind you that if you want your copy of the Happy Kitchen 7.99, go to nannybubby.com, nannybubby dot com slash happy kitchen it's right there up in front of you and also this is what the this is what the happy kitchen looks like that's front cover you will have your happy spice cabinet your happy fridge and your happy pantry everything you've ever needed to stock your kitchen so that you would be able to make any recipe that you come across almost any recipe that you come across. I give you a history of everything. It's really, it was really a fun book to put together. So I hope you really like it. Nannybubby.com slash happy kitchen. So from me to you, I wish you a wonderful weekend. On the count of three, one, two, three, go out and spread love like butter. Bye, everybody. Oop. Okay.